Hey everybody, Troy from Ohio Mountain Bike Trails here today at Austin Badger. Really cool wash station, but um, point that out. So we're gonna take this uh, paved trail. So you can see the wash station right there, hang your bike up, spray it off after you're done riding. But yeah, cross this bridge here, and then we kind of climb the road. You gotta keep an eye out because there are some paved walking trails too. A lot of people walk on. On your left. Trails up here on the left. Whew. This is actually only my second time here at Austin Badger. One of my first rides on this intense Sniper T Pro. So it's a little fun, I think three and a half mile trail in Medina. Got some pretty good steep up hills, some fun flowy stuff, but definitely worth the visit. This is also one of my first rides on this, uh, Sniper T. So it's a hundred mil or 120 mils of travel. And I am really used to riding 100 mils of travel. That's all I've really ridden on the last, I don't know, five, 10 years. But I will say it's not a huge jump. I mean, this bike is definitely comfortable and it doesn't feel like more suspension. You just feel like you're able to do more things on the bike. I mean, it's a little bit more slacked out. It's definitely a lot more fun. The first ride that I've done on it was at East Rim. And there were a lot of things there that I was pleasantly surprised with, where I might have to dab a foot here and there, or a lot of the optional jump features. I don't really hit, but on this bike, it just ate that stuff up. Follow the single track. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, mountain bike trail. Now there is a really cool uh, dual slalom course in the middle of it. As far as the components goes on this, I'm loving those. The SRAM shifting paired with the Shimano XT brakes. Definitely all the stopping power and control that you want out of the brakes. Even the SRAM stuff really shifts well under load. It's also my first time on Fox suspension. Got the Fox float on here and it's smooth. It's really nice. 
I've always been a big fan of Fox coming from the bike shop world. Just because from a rebuilding standpoint, it seems like the Fox stuff just lasts longer. Maybe not last longer, but it stays better for longer. Watch out for walkers. A lot out here. As long as you're not coming during the busy parts. say one thing that I'm not super used to on this bike yet is on my cross-country bikes I'm definitely used to being a lot further lean forward or on this bike you're a little bit more upright You've got that front wheel out in front of you so on tight corners like at Medina or, or not Medina, but uh, Huffman in Medina or the Thorn or even some stuff at Vulture's Knob where it's kind of flat and twisty. I have a hard time keeping my front tire maintaining traction. On the downhill turns though, it's not a problem. Got a lot more weight on the front wheel on the downhills. All right, where's the trail? There we go. Trail's not super easy to miss each time, but I'm surprised they don't have any markers. that I ever want to see this happen but I'm curious with all this grass how quickly the trail would just be uh just take back control if it stopped being maintained or stopped being ridden just seems like uh they do a good job with growth management I guess in other words Ugh. It looks like fun, but it looks a little broken up. I will say this kind of riding is not really my cup of tea. It's definitely more about the uh, single track. I mean, it's a single track, but it's all machine built. I mean, all, I'm all for more mountain bike trails and people like to ride this stuff. That's why it exists.
Maybe I just need to ride it faster. And I'd have a more enjoyable time. But even the steep stuff, it's intense. 120 travel is doing super well on the climbs. I actually have a race coming up November in Asheville, North Carolina. It's called the Swank 65. And it's 28 miles with 5,500 feet of climbing. Woo! That's fun. Um, I'm debating what bike to bring because if you've ever ridden in Pisgah, those downhills are no joke. And I've ridden it on my 100 mil travel bike. But I, uh, it's weird. I think that's old trail. I don't know. Um, but I might be able to go faster on the downhills. And I don't think I would go much slower on the uphills on this bike. So, thinking about putting some carbon wheels on this. And maybe going for it. It's so late in the year, I feel like I'm already getting out of shape. That I'm going to just go and complete it. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to race it. I mean, with that much climbing, it's probably going to take me at least three hours. Now, I will say all the climbing, maybe not all, but most of it, it's like gravel roads, kind of double track. So it's not super technical. To where it's going to slow you down on the uphill. You just have to worry about zoning out and climbing up and then be ready to not die on the downhills. Well, we'll see. I got the new intense cross country FRO and I think it's like 21 pounds, but that thing's still good on the downhills too. They definitely made good use of the space here considering how on off camber this terrain is and they really benched all of it out super well i mean just the moment i was down there i didn't feel like i climbed a whole lot to get up here All right. Um, dual slalom course is right here. I think the cross country course goes this way. Oh yeah, on the jump line. Well, depends who you are, I guess. What's a jump line for me? In other words, I'm not great at jumping. I think I also bottomed out my fork just on that uphill, the little ramp. So I definitely need to put some more air in it. But yeah, it's a dual slalom course. They do a lot of uh, races out here. Don't be confused. No, maybe I'm being confused. Is this the way? Could have swore this was the way. Let's see what Strava has to say. K 
Okay, Strava Group. Yep, right there. Look at that. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, so yeah, don't be confused by that little trail. Stay to the left. That little trail on the right just takes you back to the beginning. Like I thought, like I said, it's my second time here. Learn this stuff together. Make sure my camera's still good. All right. I think I need to put more air in my fork then. I was bottoming that out. Or I just need to learn how to jump better. My first ride at East Rim, I did crash. But it's because I definitely didn't have the rebound right or enough air in the fork. Like the lips on that has died down a little bit. More of a rollover now. I'm glad to see the leaves on the trail this time of year. I'm hoping they keep it on this trail. because it kind of acts as a tarp. I know it's a lot harder to ride through it, which I'm not a big fan of. But for this trail, with it being so benched out, it kind of holds the water in. Well, there's a lot of other trails that could definitely benefit from having not a lot of leaves on it. Like Tuscazor, Mohican. Seems like it drains super well. I know Mohican, they blow off the leaves. Yeah, they definitely thought out well on this piece of property too. I mean, what's gonna make the best downhill and uphill? I think, uh, I think now that we're down here on the bottom, it's just a matter of Run this last little bit and we're back. Now the cool thing about this trail too is if it's ever too muddy, you can just ride these paved trails. They go for quite some time. Obviously be careful of walkers, but it's a nice little option. You don't have to just pack your bike right back up and go home. I think once we get back under those train tracks up above, that's the end of the loop. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, do all the things, as my buddy Eric Fournette Cycling says, do all the things.
So you can either climb the path back up or you can head to the parking lot. Take a little break. Wash off your bike. Really cool features and whatnot. There we are. That's a loop at Austin Badger. Thanks for watching.